Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Symphony Tacoma's Saturday Night Live with our wonderful musicians. We have a splendid program for you this evening. I'm really excited for our special guest tonight. And thank you all for joining us, for sharing this post. So that we know that you can hear us, please um, send us a message, give us a thumbs up, give us a love heart or a wow when you see our special guest and to welcome him. Um, we're thrilled to be back with you. So please, without much ado, I'm going to let you know a little bit about our guest. Um, you just heard him playing the opening of a beautiful bursus movement from a sonata by David Philip Norris. And this is Judson, and some know him as Jay Scott. He is our assistant principal trumpeter, and he also plays regularly first trumpet as well as third trumpet with Symphony Tacoma. Please welcome Jay. From the trumpet dungeon, there you are. <laughs> yep. How are you doing? Uh, good. It's. Uh... These are strange times, but uh, we're lucky. We're all well and, you know, secure, which is not the case for everybody. Fantastic. I see you have um, a very special place where you hide out or you get locked. W which is it? <laughs> lock well, in the dungeon. I, Tell I, us about it. I do think that my wife thought it was kind of exotic to marry a trumpet player until she lived it for a while. And then, so now I'm, uh, um, well, we have a nice house, but my space is, I may lose you because of the way I'm plugged into things, but I get, I get the furnace room. So we've got the hot water heater, we've got the furnace, and then uh, some unsold CDs and trumpets. And so this is my space. I have to say that I have something similar. Being lived, living with a brass player myself, we, we also have a, a little bit of a dungeon in our um, house in Connecticut. We don't have a basement here in your university place, but it makes a fantastic space for um, all sorts of creativity. And I can see you've, you've done a great job with it. Um, look, let's raise our glasses. I see you've got a very nice glass of, of red wine there. Everybody. I want to say cheers to you all. Um, my glass is on its way. For now, <laughs> happy hour to, to you. Have a nice dinner. And we really salute you for joining us and following us through these times. So as they say in England, bottoms up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never I can never have wine when I'm with you. So this I thought I was gonna take this opportunity to like, because I'm always working. Well, now we can do all sorts of things that we <laughs> wouldn't normally do, like explore the Trumpet Dungeon. And in a way, this is extraordinary how it brings us uh, closer together and doing things that we wouldn't normally be doing. So thank you for being part of this incredible creative journey. Um, you are such a creative artist, and I've had a lot of fun discovering about your, uh, your background, your talents, your skills. So tell us a little bit about the first piece we heard. I think this is a really special, unique story. So um, probably it's it's eight or ten years ago now. I um, I, I decided I was going to record a CD, and um, I put out a call to composers, and seventy composers sent me pieces, hoping that I would at least play them. Um, mm -hmm. And there were quite a few. I mean, out of the seventy, there were ten pieces that I really liked. This piece, um, the Sonata by David Philip Norris, um, really struck me, and um, I did record that CD. Um, it was I was going to finish editing it in like March, and then that's not happening right now. But I expect it'll be out sometime this year. But the um, 
it's a uh, it's the the piece is a remarkable journey, and then it ends with this beautiful, calm, uh, amazingly simple. It's just a lot of it is just C major chords over and over in the piano, and um, it really does create this great sense of calm and and relaxation, which um, eh, relaxation isn't quite the right word, but resolution. That's that's more that's more what it is. Uh, yeah. So. Um, we have a question. Tell, tell us why you have, which, which trumpet did you play that on? And somebody's asked, you have, why do trumpet players have so many trumpets? Um, and which ones are the most common? Well, in high school band, you'd be playing a B flat trumpet. Mm -hmm. The, uh, in general, orchestras use C trumpets. Um, and they are a little bit shorter you can you can especially see it right here, or maybe you can't see where I'm pointing. So the um, the you can see the slide is longer here than it is here, um, and the um, so the B flat trumpet, the B flat trumpet is good for bands because it's about blend, whereas the C trumpet is a little more focused, and so that's to cut through all those string players in front of you, mm -hmm. um, and so that's. So those are the two the two basic instruments, um, and then anything beyond that has very specific uses. Um, I have an E flat trumpet that sits in a case over there, and I pretty much would only use that for Bartok concerto orchestra, Haydn uh, trumpet concerto, Hummel trumpet concerto, third trumpet on Bach. That's about it. Um, so it mostly just sits, um, but when you need that tool it can make a big difference. Which is your favorite? Um, C trumpet. That's, um, I usually warm up every day on B flat because it's sort of the most open, free blowing, most relaxed. But C trumpet is is my my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My brother's also a trumpet player and um, I actually started uh, playing the trumpet before I moved down the line, it somehow it, it was um, an exploration of the brass instruments and I ended up on the, the tenor horn for many years before I ended up on the French horn and I was taught by a trombonist oh. and my brother's a very fine trumpeter plays in Leipzig and now I'm married to a trombonist so I love the world of brass <laughs> as well and um, you know, the, the brass sound in the orchestra is just such a special, special place, I think. I mean, every, every section has its uniqueness. But having grown up with brass bands, um, I really, truly love the brass. You, you play, you, you direct brass bands. Tell us about that. Um, yes, I, uh, a few years ago, I don't know, 11, 2011, I, uh, I started conducting Brass Band Northwest. And um, mm -hmm. that has been, that's been a lot of fun. The, um, and at first I, I almost didn't audition for the job because I thought, oh, it's just brass. What do you, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, don't even have winds, you know, at least with, there's more color variety with a, a, a wind band. But um, it's, a, it's a unique ensemble that um, can sound, um, really gets a remarkable range of color considering it's all brass. And um, because the, the instruments are all conical except for the trombones, the, the sound is wonderfully warm, but, but also because they're brass, very precise. So I like to describe it as um, the sound of a brass band is the warmth of, that you would expect of a string orchestra, but the precision you would expect of a jazz band. And um, yeah. so. And they get to yeah. have the percussion join them as well, so you can get that a lot of fun, fun stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a few questions along the same line, so I wanted to thank everybody who sent these questions. We have uh, Clark Delia, and we have Dave Hanel Hamilton, and also Bill Hagens. Thank you all for these questions. So it's all about rotary tr rotary valve trumpets. North American orchestras typically play the the, the um, um, piston. Yeah. Instance. So tell us about why uh, and when you use them, the rotary 
so yourself. The, um, so the rotary trumpet, the rotary valve trumpet, it has valves like a French horn. And that's probably the least important thing about it. Um, it's the obvious thing, and that's why they're called rotary valve trumpets. But um, and it changes the articulation a little bit. But the um, if you look, so both these trumpets are the same length. They're both pitched in C. Trying to make sure I don't drop one. But if you look, let's see if I can do this. If you look at the size of the bell, the rotary valve trumpet bell is is um, is bigger. It's and and um, so it it has the potential to create a, a, a bigger, warmer sound. The other thing that's uh, kind of critical is the tube here starts smaller and then ends up bigger. And so for soft playing, it it really blends well with the woodwinds. It's it's a it's a more intimate sound and um, and dark and not. Um, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't project as much. It 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 blends. Um, Can you when, make a note on each one? Sure. Give us. Give, I, I don't know if you're really going to be able to hear it over this connection, but the. Um, so let's see. Boy, I kind of feel like I'm taking an audition here for the conductor. <laughs> My popular request out there. Let's see. So. See if anybody um, the difference. <laughs> That's a regular piston trumpet, and um, my microphone may not be good. And actually, it may be just distorting like crazy. That's also possible. Yeah. So really. So we welcome. Can they? Can you guys tell us? Do you hear the difference between those two, and how does it sound like? To, to you, I have to say that the second is my my personal favorite. Yeah. 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 So, but I am so excited about what you've done for us this weekend and want to get right to it. You have recorded um, a gorgeous and creative piece for us. Tell us about it, introduce it, and, and let's let everybody um, hear it. Sure. Watch it. So, um... One of the things I do is I teach trumpet at the University of Puget Sound, and um, in the early aughts or mid aughts, I guess, um, I had a student, Greg Simon, and he was mostly a jazz trumpet player, um, but he was also very much interested in composition. So after he graduated from Puget Sound, he went off to Michigan and got a doctorate in composition, and now he uh, teaches composition uh, at the University of Nebraska in Lincoln, and um, so. He wrote this piece uh, for somebody else, um, and it's for trumpet and uh, prepared tape, which sounds potentially scary, but it's mostly, most of the tape is um, just the words of a poem by um, Kipling, and, uh, and then a few little, um, well, the poem is called The Way Through the Woods, and so it's some wood sounds, some other little things thrown in, and it's a very atmospheric piece. Anyway, um, since all my concerts have been canceled, I still have some teaching, but suddenly I, I, I don't have to, to prepare concert music and I don't have the rehearsals and the concerts. So I have extra time in my schedule. So I've taken the chance to um, learn a couple programs. Um, the first one was uh, an Apple program called Logic Pro, which is for editing music. And then the, the, um, the one I'm about to dive into is Final Cut Pro for editing video. Um, this video I made with iMovie. And so um, there's a few things there that I can't do that I wish I could do. Um, but uh, but I'm, I'm actually pretty happy with the way it turned out. Um, so this is one of the projects I, I took on. And I was, I was going to do this. Um, and then Sarah called me earlier this week and said, oh, and I said, oh, I guess I better get this done. Uh, so I kind of hopped right on it. And um, you'll see the third version. Uh, the first version was just me playing here in this room. And I thought, you know what? They're going to see more of the Trumpet Dungeon than they want to see. And then I just had some tree pictures. And 
I sent that and Sarah said, oh, that's great. I kind of miss seeing you. And so um, yesterday, my daughter and I went to, um, I live near the University of Washington in Seattle. And so we went to the um, Urban Horticulture Center, the bird sanctuary, which is a, is a wild place right on the lake. And uh, we, we got some, she, my daughter uh, filmed it on my iPhone and, um, and then we, I pieced it together. So anyway, so this is uh, the, the Way Through the Woods by uh, Greg Simon. The Way Through the Woods by Rudyard Kipling. They shut the road through the woods 70 years ago. Weather and rain have undone it again, and now you would never know there was once a road through the woods before they planted the trees. There was once a road through the woods. It is underneath the coppice and heath and the thin anemone. Only the keeper sees that where the ring dove broods and the badgers roll at ease, there was once a road through the woods. Enter the woods of a summer evening late When the night air cools On the trout ringed pools Where the otter whistles his mate They fear not men in the woods Because they see so few If you enter the woods of a summer evening late, you will hear the beat of a horse's feet and the swish of a skirt in the dew, steadily cantering through the misty solitudes. But there is no road through the woods.
Well, that was gorgeous. I, I enjoyed it again. Beautifully thought provoking. I, especially now when everybody is trying to seek a path forward, a way forward yep. in these times. Very poignant. So tell us, you, you're obviously um, very disciplined to be able to learn these new programs, to keep practicing, going into the woods, recording. How is that part of your natural personality? How did you how did you come to be so driven? Um, well, I do think that that is a thing a person learns. But uh, just being a musician, you only get better if you work, and and so um, so that's definitely part of it. Is is um, I can't laze around and then show up on Friday night and play a concert and expect anything. So, um, so being a musician teaches one as many other things do, but teaches one the need for work. Um, I'm a little older now. I was not always so, uh, so driven. Um, and, um, and I will say that, um, because my life is, you know, I, I teach at the University of Sound. I play with several different orchestras, do some freelance work. My schedule is sometimes very crowded and then sometimes pretty open. And so I've, I've spent some years learning how to deal with open space. Um, however, the, um, there was a, one event in my life that really, um, uh, where I really learned um, anyway. I was teaching uh, at a music camp in Maine, um, New England music camp. And um, it was a big enough camp that they had two trumpet teachers. I was one and the other was Steve Jones who taught at uh, Western Michigan. Great, he was a great trumpet player and um, such a great teacher. So I was in my mid twenties, uh, you know, camp started at 8 a.m. And the first thing we had to do as faculty was sit in the ensembles with the students and play with them. And so, um, I didn't like to get up. So I would roll out of bed at 7.55. I would grab a cup of coffee and I'd walk to my first rehearsal um, and then play some really loud, hard band piece. And in, a, in about a week, 10 days, I was really hurting because I was not, you know, it would be like a runner hitting the track and sprinting without any warm up at all. It, it's, not, it's not good for the muscles. Steve was getting up at 6.30 and warming up for an hour before he went to rehearsal. And so, um, you know, I, I, at the end of this 10 days or whatever, I'm like, okay, his way works. My way does not work. This is not, this is not sustainable. And so I, I, I just said, okay, I'm gonna learn from him. And I got up and I said, can I do your warm up? And, um, and I've been doing it for probably 30 years now. I've made some changes. I've tweaked it, but it's basically built on on what Steve um, showed me. It's a it's a book by Michael Chun called A Trumpeter's Daily Routine. But that's not the important thing. The the um, what I learned was um, that whatever is most important to me, I need to do that first. And so, as a trumpet player, um, approaching the instrument um, in a disciplined manner is really the most important thing I do every day. And so, I get up. And I play trumpet. Okay, now, oddly, because this isn't really me, I've been getting up at six and six thirty lately, um, and so I don't just pick up the horn because my wife would kill me. But the, um, but it is one of the things I do first, and um, and that methodical warm up, you know, the the focused attention on technique and detail is 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 what has. It's worked so well for me musically, and and I will and I always tell my students, you know, some of them are music majors, some of them are not, and I just say, whatever is most important to you, you should do that first. Like, don't read the paper, don't eat breakfast, maybe get a cup of coffee, and get started. And yeah. the beauty of it is, you you put in half an hour, and then or an hour, and then it's like, uh, you know, you can go away and do get breakfast or whatever. But you feel you've already like um, broached that hardest thing, the beginning of whatever it is you're doing. Yeah, that's so, such good advice. Um, I've been, since you told me that story, I've been thinking about that and thinking, right, the other day I was lying in bed and I got up and thought, you know what, I'm gonna do that 
that letter <laughs> that I need to write right now because it's been and it bugging me and getting it off my got it off my shoulder. So I thank you for that. Um, we've got some more questions that have come in. Um, one is to me, um, how many trumpeters have I been on stage with in the past? Well, um, Brass Band of Battle Creek, I've conducted a couple of times. They're a phenomenal brass band in Michigan. And um, I think there's about 10, 10 trumpeters in that. And I, I did, don't think we've talked about the flugelhorn, but personally, that's that's also one of my favorite instruments that kind of in the trumpet trumpet family um another question for you from jim short that came in um thank you for your support and your wife and i attend symphony tacoma um and love the saturday night lives that's great thank you please uh, spread the word everybody and i wanted to remind people that that you don't have to just watch it on facebook we post these afterwards on youtube and so if somebody is envious that you've got Facebook, but they don't want to get an account, please let them know that they can watch it after the fact. Anyway, the question is, uh, what different types of ensembles have you played with over the years, especially as a young former developing your craft? Um, I have played in just about everything that has a trumpet. Um, you know, obviously bands, high school band, etc. cetera. Mm -hmm. um, 10 years ago, 20, 15 years ago, maybe, I uh, I played in a, a local rock group, Peaceable Lane, that uh, did covers of Chicago and Blood, Sweat and & Tears and, and Tower of Power and that kind of thing. Um, I've played in a salsa band, um, and that's actually really hard on the face. Um, I've played uh, in Baroque ensembles, um, you know, playing natural trumpet, um, and uh, I well, guess the thing I haven't done much of is play jazz because I really don't, I mean, I can, I can get by if I have to like improvise like a solo in a piece, but, mm -hmm. but I'm not a guy who can sit down and, and play standards all night long. It's, or you would not want to hear me if I tried. I mean, it's, cause that's a, that's really a special, that, that takes a lot of work to, to make that, that sound good. Yeah, and often those tend not to be the musicians who are learning Mahler symphonies and right, um, right. playing Bach on trumpet and all, all sorts of others. It really is a dedicated skill, just like any high-level skill. You have to work for that. Even if you're an athlete, you have to work for that specific goal. You know, some people can cross-train, but, you know, I, I'm learning all about that too. Um, we have another question somebody was asking me about, and you might have an opinion on this too. Um, Mahler's first symphony, I think, let's see, it was, somebody was interested to know the, um, when the horns all stand up uh, at the end, I think it's Dino Seppe, thanks for this question. What happens when all the horns rise at the end? Well, um, I think that's probably something a conductor specifically did, but Mahler wrote um, Schaltrichte auf, which means basically lift your bell up. Um, and he says not only for the horns to basically you turn that up and instead of the sound going back and then bouncing off the wall and then into the audience, it goes just straight up into the middle of the orchestra sound. He also requires the oboes to do that, and the clarinets, yeah. trumpets, you're already Jaltrichter auf, but maybe they, they also do a little bit of this at times. Right, right. It's there are definitely times when he asks for that, yeah. Yeah. Um, he liked volume, I mean, clearly loud, and and it's, being a horn player myself, um, you know, it is, it, it's hard, it's different technique to do. It's hard to play when you got something up here. It's a very, actually very heavy instrument. When I first played the horn, I went to a camp for five days and I think my mother didn't recognize me when I got home because I was like, had blisters all over my hands from holding the horn. <laughs> and I'd been eating fried breakfast every day. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's a heavy instrument and um, it's it's an incredible sound when when, you know, 10 horn players do do that. Impressive. Um, let's see, there's another question that came in from Hope Harrison. And I did want to thank Greg Simon because he's been watching and listening to that. Thank you for writing that gorgeous piece. 
we're going to be hearing and replaying that as much as possible. Um, what led you to play the trumpet, Jay? That's from Hope Harrison. Um, uh, Hope is a good friend of mine from when I lived in Boston. Um, uh, let's see. I was, I was in fourth grade. They came to the school, played instruments, and um, I just, you know, I heard the trumpet and I said, well, that's the one. And um, I, uh, so they did you, when you filled out the sheet, they you give up choices. And uh, they said, look, not everyone's gonna get their first choice. So I purposely chose things that I thought a lot of people were gonna do. So it was trumpet, which a lot of people do, of course. But then I think I put, um, well, I'm not gonna say because I have friends with all these instruments, but I put other were gonna be popular choices so they would say, okay, well, we'll, we'll leave them on trumpet. Mm -hmm. And I um, really know exactly what was trumpet, uh, but I will tell you this, by eighth grade, I was pretty sure that's what I, I, I knew that's what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. I felt like there wasn't anything else I knew how to do except play trumpet, so that's what I was going to do. And, and um, well, so served you well and and we're lucky to have you you with us um and also i just have to point out how many how many groups you play with i mean principal trumpet of blessed sacrament baroque orchestra principal trumpet of lake washington symphony orchestra and principal of north corner chamber orchestra co-founder and camp director of puget sound brass and brass coach for Vachi Chamber Music, of course, trumpet instructor of at University of Puget Sound Community Music, and many, many other substitute playing with Seattle Symphony, subbing Fifth Avenue. I mean, clearly it was a good choice for you because you're in demand, in demand. Um, and I think, you know, it's, I thought it'd be interesting just to let people know that there's this sort of undercurrent rivalry right between the conductor and the principal trumpet often can you tell us a little uh, why, bit about i have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> the nine of you. well you told me an interesting story when we were speaking earlier um this week i think i think you should um you should tell that oh, story about mexico you, for a minute everybody all right you want me to bring up mexico okay so um uh I was getting a, a master's degree at New England Conservatory at New England Conservatory. And um, after my first year, I was offered a position in the, the uh, L'Orquesta Philharmonica de la Ciudad de Mexico, the uh, Philharmonic, uh, Mexico City Philharmonic. And uh, needless to say, I was very excited. This was like, I was felt like I was on my way. And um, so the, um, the man who conducted the orchestra was um, interesting. So um, we were on tour. Um, well, okay, this is the only time in my life I've kept a diary. <laughs> I like, I was there for like two days and I said, I got to start writing this down because this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. This is nothing I've ever like experienced. You mentioned no names, right? Right, and we're not gonna we're not gonna go to names, yeah. But the um, so we were um, okay. Yeah, I can't tell that story. Okay, um, um, but the the one you were alluding to. So uh, we were on uh, near the end of my time there. I was just there for one year, uh, and then I decided I I was either gonna spend the rest of my life or I was gonna go back and finish my degree, and I decided to finish the degree. So the um, we were on tour of uh, Northern Mexico in places that, you know, had never seen an orchestra. Some of them barely had electricity. It was, um, so anyway, we go into the smallish town and uh, the, um, the doctor is having drinks with, and concert time comes, no conductor. Mm -hmm. Goes by, no conductor. And the audience is standing, so all, every seat is taken, and the audience is standing shoulder to shoulder in the aisles. I mean, if there had been a fire, we were all dead. There was no way to get out of there. So um, finally, the concert master comes out on stage and starts the orchestra. It was like 45 minutes late. And immediately, the conductor shows up in the back of the hall, because he had been upstairs, he was around, 
he was just anyway so he's pushing his way down the down the aisle and so then they send the personnel manager out and says oh maestro is very upset you must stop and everyone just says okay and then just keeps playing well we've been on tour for about five or six weeks um this was um what's the uh there's a rossini overture that starts with the snare drum roll anyway um so we were playing that and so they finally they turned the lights out but we've been on tour a long time so we just kept playing fine they turn the lights on conductor comes out fires the concert master on stage just like you're out you're done so we did the rest of the tour without a concert master well you know somebody moved up but um so it was yeah the stories from mexico are unbelievable that's that's a good one there's some i can't tell so there you go. thank you well we 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 got um unions in america to keep everybody <laughs> in place <laughs> um well thank you for for sharing that G casa latra was it that's it that was the one yep Yep. Okay, so um, I want to thank you very, very much for doing this. And I, I think that it would be really nice to end with watching that video that you made one more time and then follow on with something a bit fun um, so people can continue to, we can sort of wave our goodbyes and people can continue to listen to these these that gorgeous piece again, that second excerpt. Um, but then also we have a marvelous video of you playing with uh, Brass Band Northwest, both solo cornet and as conductor uh, from a year or so ago, uh, an arrangement that you arranged uh, of Ode for Trumpet. So um, I'd love to hear from our audience. Would you, would you like to try again our luck on the, um, on that lovely video that Jay made, and then we'll go to something a bit lighter and fun and jazzier to, to end our evening together. I'm not sure if the delay on the comments means that I don't get to hear it. Or how about we do it this way? What do you think, Jay? Should we, should we do the brass band first? And then we sure, can end. If people with... want to hear the other one again. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep, yep. Great. Good. Well, thanks everybody for joining us tonight. Everybody's saying yes, yes, please, encore, encore. So great. Let's do the, let's do the um, the brass piece. Um, Susan is listening to us here. Susan, you're a technical whiz. Let's hear them both again. And thank you so very much for this and giving us the opportunity to get to know you better, to see the trumpet dungeon and to hear some wonderful stories and learn more about the trumpet. One last question came in. What is the most difficult piece you've ever played? Um, difficulty can be judged in a lot of different ways. Um, Box Brandenburg number two, that's a hard piece. I've played that a couple of times. Um, there's a piece by Eric Chaslow for trumpet and tape, um, you know, pre-recorded sound. Um, mm -hmm. And it was the first time I'd ever done that crazy crazy intricate um it's called out of joint um and actually there's a lot of mute changes and i i got a little carpal tunnel because i had to grip i had to hold my horn like this through the whole piece and it was it was cutting off my nerves so it, it might be it might be out of joint um but what a great explosion of sound that piece is anyway very cool Okay, well, we're but thank you so much for inviting me, Sarah. This has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. That's great. It's great. And, and all those stories about trumpeters and conductors. Well, good thing I started with a trumpet and I married a brass player. <laughs> I'm sometimes thankful that I have a lot of brass in my jeans. <laughs> good night. Take care, right. everybody. Stay well. Stay healthy. Thank you for all your support to Symphony Tacoma. Um, we're going to get back. We just give us some, give us some time and we're, we're going to be back. We'll get rid of this virus and we'll be all healthy and well and be together soon. Meanwhile, we'll have fun like this. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night.
Way Through the Woods by Rudyard Kipling They shut the road through the woods seventy years ago. Weather and rain have undone it again, and now you would never know there was once a road through the woods before they planted the trees. There was once a road through the woods. It is underneath the coppice and heath and the thin anemone. Only the keeper sees that where the ring dove broods and the badgers roll at ease, there was once a road through the woods. Once a road through the woods. Yet if you enter the woods of a summer evening late, when the night air cools on the trout ringed pools, where the otter whistles his mate, they fear not men in the woods because they see so few. If you enter the woods of a summer evening late, you will hear the beat of a horse's feet and the swish of a skirt in the dew, steadily cantering through the misty solitudes. But there is no road through the woods. Mm-hmm.